Good morning and welcome to Castle Perry Methodist Church. Hopefully now you can hear me online as well. Um, so welcome to those joining us on Zoom and in the building. I've got a few notices before we start um, this morning. So uh, firstly for me, it is the general church meeting next Sunday after worship in the building. Um, if you are on church council or a leadership team or I had your email address, you've probably had an email from me about it already. The details are also in the church notices. Um, so if you have anything you need to do for that, hopefully you already know that, but check with me afterwards if you're not sure. Um, and thank you to Robert in advance because he's agreed to uh, chair that, I believe. I'm looking at him. I realise I haven't checked that with him, but I believe that's right. Thank you, Robert, in advance for that. Um, on the same note, Craig and Elizabeth are leaving us at the end of, uh, at the end of July as Craig's leaving service. There is a box for gift donations at the back of the church, or you can do that um, direct to the bank account. The details are on the notices if you would like to contribute to a leaving gift for Craig and Elizabeth. It is also MHA Sunday, and I've been given the envelopes. I've left them at the back of the church, so um, if you would like to gift aid your donation to MHA Sunday, um, there is an uh, envelopes and a basket at the back of the church as well, so that will be um, a retiring collection um, separate from the collection that we will have for our church during the service. And my final notice is that this evening's worship at 6.30 is a Holy Communion service um, with Tina, Reverend Tina Swire, but she's also bringing a student preacher with her who is preaching, um, and it would be great to see as many people in the congregation as possible this evening. Um, so I will... Uh, start with the gathering prayer and then uh, we will continue in worship. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God in mysterious relationship. As we worship you, draw us deeper into the wonder and mystery of your nature. Praise, Praise God, God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And I'll welcome Ken who's come from Congsbury today. Actually, he hasn't come from Congsbury today, but he joins us from the congregation. Thanks very much. Thank you. Well, it's good to be here, and it's good that it's such a lovely day, isn't it? And we're going to um, worship God in singing our first hymn, which is 350 in um, the hymn book. I cannot tell why Hebrew angels worship.
And now we're joining together in prayer. So let us join together in our prayers of adoration, praise, confession, and it will be followed by the Lord's Prayer. So let us pray. Almighty God, you are the creator of everything. What an amazing world you have given us. So much amazing variety with sizes great and small, wonderful and different colors throughout, throughout each season. And then there are seasons for planting, seasons for growth and seasons for harvesting. Everything fits together and combines in so many amazing ways. So help us today and every day to realize afresh the marvels with which we are surrounded. This prayer we offer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Loving God, caring for us all, we are constantly amazed and driven to wonder. This is because we discover <coughs> we discover the wonders that surround us day by day. Be with us in our living, in our discoveries, and in our looking, and in our days, in our lives each day. So we offer our lives to you, gracious God. Amen. Amen. Judging God. <coughs> Somehow we find that we sin against you in our daily lives. <coughs> Sometimes by our thoughts, as we forget the effects of our actions on other people. Sometimes by our words, which can be so de devastating to others. Sometimes by our deeds, which brings sadness to others. So we ask in Jesus' name for your forgiveness as we offer the prayer that Jesus himself taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And I've been asked to give a talk to you children and I, I sort of scratch my head. And then I thought, so often, we forget or don't understand things. But later on we do. And when I was about your age, I was in a Sunday school class and, and the um, teacher, he was actually a very important man in his own, when he was out at work, he was a banker. And he was very um, intelligent, but he wanted to tell us about, um, it was when, Abraham was not Abraham, his grandsons. They had a quarrel. And Esau and Jacob, you've heard of it? Yes, they had a quarrel because one of them stole the other's birthright. In those days, when you had, uh, when a person was getting old, and he, his father Jacob was getting very old, and he was getting a bit blind and a bit shaky, and he, he he wanted to transfer all his wealth, all his goods to his son, the oldest one, Esau. But his youngest son somehow got sent it, whilst Esau was going out to get um, a special meal for his um, father, his other son came in with another meal and gave him the meal and he didn't understand that um, it, the, his voice was really, so touched him, he put goat um, skin on, on his arm so that when he touched him, he knew it was the oldest son because he had the hairy arms and all of that. So, what happened? After his father died, there was quarreling between the brothers, or what, perhaps it was even before. But um, Jacob was sent off to the distant homeland to find somebody to be his wife. And that separated the sons, and it was many years before they joined together. And by that time, they were a bit older and wiser. But on the journey, Jacob got to a place in, out in the desert, and in the Middle East, so much is desert because it's so dry. And there was a stone on the, uh, the roadside, and he 
she used it as a pillow and laid her, her on it and um, went off to sleep. And then the amazing thing, he had a dream or a vision. He saw that just at that very spot, there was a ladder going up to heaven and angels or messengers of God were going up and down carrying messages. And when he woke up, he thought, this is a holy place. I, I must do something about this. So he set up the stone to remind him when he passed that way again of what had happened. Now, this isn't part of the story. And, and it, am I only throwing it in because it's a bit of general knowledge, really? It's said that that stone was one day taken many, many miles away to a place which we now know as Scotland. It wasn't Scotland in those days, but it's now Scotland. And that they had a place in a, uh, where they had a, a gathering place where they had all their kings uh, were crowned. And they always stood on a stone, which they say was the stone that Jacob set up all those years before. But anyway, um, this banker um, teacher, he, Mr. Putney <laughs> was, I can still remember him now, he said, but people don't really understand um, what that vision was all about. And he so he explained it to us, and it's, it's stuck with me ever since, so it must have it must, uh, meant something. He said, in every town in Mesopotamia, the land of the two rivers, they have an art had an artificial mountain, because the people there had come from a mountainous country, and they wanted to worship God on a mountain with um, it's because it's, uh, they thought that was a holy place. But these artificial mountains, they were like pyramids, but they weren't pyramids like you see in Egypt. They were steps. And there was, um, I don't know if you can guess how many steps there were going up. <laughs> no, no, there was just, uh, there was, it was, you could call them terraces. There was seven. I've looked it up on the internet and uh, some people say there was eight, but I, th I think they've made a mistake because it depends whether you count the terrace or the um, piece of um, brickwork. And the biggest one was um, 900 feet tall, which is quite a long, um, what, what's that metric? Anybody know what conversion is about? Um, 30, 300 meters, that's it. Um, so, um, and they have a they had a staircase at one side, and ordinary people were only allowed up onto the first step. Important, slightly more important people on the next, and so on until on the very top, the king of the town or the, the city would um, be allowed to go up there, and he was there supposed to listen to the words of God and transmit them down the line. And um, he said, um, "Well, he didn't tell. I found this bit out." Um, all of us in our jobs and what we're doing, sometimes we're just sweeping the floor, that's the lowest, but sometimes we might make huge decisions which affect the whole world. I don't, I don't know whether you will ever do that, but um, we would then be on the top of it. And so one day I was in an office, so I, uh, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't a road sweeper and I wasn't someone to, but I thought oh, I'd make a test for this. So I, uh, we all gathered uh, together at um, coffee break. And I thought, well, the boss, the, the chief, chief engineer um, in the office, well, what was he, what's he interested in? And I thought, well, he, he, well, I do all the designing and the drawings and so do the other people. He, he can't be that, but he, he arranges that. And I sort of said, Oh, Alpha made um, reinforcements. So I said, I said something like, "Oh, do, do we manage to keep all the dates for all the uh, that we asked for getting all the deliveries?" Done? And you know, having said that, the floodgates opened. I couldn't get away from him for well at least half an hour, if not an hour, <laughs> because he had nobody else to talk to about all his problems. And so, just remember that, and perhaps in life, when you um, grow up a bit. You might think, well, what's that person interested in? How would I speak to him? And you might discover all sorts of things because you know that their interests are different from yours and you've got to talk to them in ways that they understand. And so we're coming to the next hymn. 
which I've um, chosen is, oh, well, I don't need to tell you it's under an age yet, but there's a light upon the mountains and the day is at the spring, number 188. <clears throat> Now, I've asked for the appointed reader to read our first reading from John. <laughs> there we are. Um, our first reading is taken from John 13, 31 to 35. When he was gone, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified in God, is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify his Son himself, and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, we'll know, um, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Thanks be to God. Um, have we been notified to have the um, 
838 up on the, we have, good. We're, so we're gonna do the Psalm, which is um, in, in our hymn books. I'll, I'll get, get it because I um, can't see myself. Um, here we are. Um, so I'm gonna read the light print. You respond with the dark print. It's Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from heaven. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all his shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens. And he waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He gives their hands which cannot be lost. Praise the Lord from the earth. You see monsters and all beasts. Fire and hail, snow and frost. Stormy wind fulfilling his command. Mountains and all hills. Fruit trees and all cedars. Wild animals and all cattle. Creeping things and flying birds. Kings of the earth and all people. Young men and women alone. All can come together. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a home for his people. Praise the Lord is faithful. For the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. That was really done well. Thanks very much for that. Um, and now um, our second lesson comes from Revelations. And I guess somebody knows they're doing it. Over to you. Revelations 21 verses 1 to 6. A new heaven and a new earth. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now I put... We are going to have the collection in just a moment, but I'll just tell you a bit about MHA. As you know, it's Methodist Homes for the Aged. And um, I got to hear about it a lot because my wife, um, when she was alive, she used to do all the things in the old West Mendit circuit for it. But what I'm going to tell you is about um, a gentleman who used to come to our church and he was living on his own. He, uh, and eventually he decided to go into a care home he didn't need to go, but he thought he'd have much more company there. So off he went, but the, then he was taken ill and he couldn't be looked after. So they sent him into the Methodist um, home in um, Bristol. I don't know if there's more than one, but the one, I went to see him. And I was so impressed because most places that I'd visited up to them as care home, the people that just sat around in a circle and went to sleep for the day, that seemed to be, or watched the television, that seemed to be all that they did. But in, in the MHA home, when I got there, he was doing exercises, knees bent, arms stretch. I thought that was a great thing. And then um, they had discussion groups and he would be um, encouraged to go and have chats and that. And they really looked after not only the body, but the minds and spirits of the people who were resident in their homes. So I commend it. So we're going to have the collection now and you can collect um, an envelope for MHA as you leave afterwards. Loving God, we offer a pittance of what we receive 
but take it, Lord, and use it in your service, and may it be expanded to meet the needs to which it is sent. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now we're singing again. It's um, Come Let Us Sing of a Wonderful Love. Tens of In order to do proper prayers of intercession, I always like to have suggestions from the congregation. And one, I think we, we want about um, at least seven um, um, points that I can use in the prayer. So um, hands up anybody who's got an instant one that we ought to um, remember in our prayers this morning. Right, yes, I will include that. The choice in Ukraine. Yeah. And strangely enough, we have a family in Kongsby who came out as refugees from the Ukraine, but not in this conflict, but in the Second World War. And they chose Britain, not because of any love for Britain at the time, but because it was so near um, Ukraine and they could, they would be able to go home when it was all sorted out. And of course it never was, and that, that's the it. Um, so that's two. Can we pray for Craig and Elizabeth as their thoughts turn towards their move? Craig and Elizabeth. Yes, we certainly. And, and for Colin and Claire, who are preparing to come here from South Africa. Claire, yeah. coming. Oh, that's a long way. 
Yeah, it's surprising how many connections there are um, all the way around the world, isn't there? Um, so we've got, we've got a couple more. Any, anything else? Anything that you can think of? Balancing modern life to spiritual life. Sorry? Balancing modern oh, life. Oh, right, yes. Yeah. Modern. Mm. Spirit. All right, yeah. And one last one. One, two, three. Yeah, well, I think we need one. Yeah, there's uh, effectively what we call the positive crisis. Oh, the crisis in cost of living. Well, we, it's our name for being poor, isn't it? Right, let's just join together in prayer. Uh -huh. Loving God, your spirit is with us every day and every passing moment. And so you know the worries of our hearts and the worries that of the people around us we especially think in um, our people who are suffering from dementia at this time we've been so clever at um, healing the body we aren't so good at healing the mind and yet without our minds we we are nothing so lord be with all those who seek to help them all those who are researching into the our medical aspects of it. Uh, we ask that you bring a breakthrough so that people can be restored to health in body, mind, and spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And then, Lord, we, we are beset by problems. How do nations live one with another in peace and harmony, assisting each other? We, we hear on our news, and we've heard for weeks, all of the distress that's happening in the Ukraine. We don't know the ins and outs of the dispute, or what, if it's just greed on the part of the Russians, but whichever it is, help the peacemakers to so work that peace is restored, that people are no longer killed without really rhyme or reason that, that the people are restored to their homes and that they are able to get the life of their nation <coughs> working again. this we ask in jesus name amen and then we think about the change every ministry here in this church we pray for craig and elizabeth as they wind down and get ready for their move. As we think about um, the, um, Colin and uh, Claire, who are coming from South Africa, who seem such a long way away, a world away, and yet we're so close, we can talk to them um, within minutes if we dial the right number on our phones. So Lord, be with them, all those four people and their families, and all those affected by the move, like ourselves and the congregation in South Africa, and maybe work together to make a smooth transition. And maybe make use of the spiritual gifts that each has and which they will take with them. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And then we think about the problems we have um, here in our country. With the upheaval, we, we're not, we don't quite understand why it should be at this time. The, the cost of living crisis, the difficulties of um, trains being on time and buses being on time, the same seems to be a compounding of problems. And we just ask that those who are responsible will so work together that the, all these problems will be solved speedily so that life can be restored to the proper way, of, as we think, of life going on. So, Lord, be with them all. In Jesus' name. Amen. And then, finally, Lord, a problem that is with us all, 
the balancing of our life in the world with the life in your presence, the spiritual life that we lead. We ask, Lord, that we, un we seek understanding so that when we deal with other people, we, we don't deal with them as cogs in the machine, but deal with them as true children of yours. And we pray that other people will treat us in the same way. So in Jesus' name, we offer these our prayers, the prayers that we've uttered and talked about, and perhaps the prayers that are in our hearts, which we've been unable to ask. Be with us all. Be with, help us to solve the problems we face. And may your love and joy be in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So I think it's time to sing the next hymn, which is God of grace and God of glory. heard them and I, 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 before I bring, begin my service let me just say something about a, a remark I heard just a few minutes before we started the service about how difficult it is to understand the Holy Spirit. I was placed one day in Western Super America um, about a couple of years back and somebody started to have a who I know it, I belong to a, an organization you may have it here in um, in the Castle Carey. If you don't, it might be a good, good thing to start. Um, it's called the U3A. It's the University of the, three, uh, of the Third Age. Is some, some of you know about it. We have lots of, um, we have lots of different groups and I've been in several of them. And one day I went to some event and a general meeting or something, but somebody started talking uh, to me about Christianity and I knew he was the uh, he's the arch atheist in in, in, the, in our organization and I thought what shall I say to him because I I've never got been faced with it so I said well look perhaps we ought to start with the um the easy bit um, about the Holy Spirit and of course um I said now uh, um, you are an embodiment of God, in, in the sense that you are a father, because I knew we had children, and you were once a son, and in between, that's where the Holy Spirit, uh, um, you know, lives and does its work. And uh, he's never spoken to me again. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I am, um, it, it, it is so easy to understand the principle it's very difficult sometimes to live as Christ would have us live. Now, in, um, 
Now, in our readings, um, I took them from the lectionary the other day, and I, um, sometimes you wonder how they managed to connect them, but they, they seem to connect. Firstly, we thought about there will be a new heaven and a new earth. And secondly, love one another, Jesus said, as I have loved you. Well, the new heaven and the new earth will be realized on the planet Earth in, in the future. It's going to be the, a new age and things are going to be quite different. And somehow we all realize it. You know, we all know the, the um, hymn, New Every Morning. And you know, since I've been retired and been free to get up when I want and go to sleep when I want, I've made it a practice to get up very early. Um, I, I try to get six o'clock in the morning and sometimes it's even early now. And on mornings like today, when the birds are singing, the blue skies blue overhead, and I go for a walk around um, Cheddar Reservoir sometimes, it's really great to be alive, especially as nobody else is there. And it's a really a privilege to be out on such a day. But we have to apply those thoughts and treat them as real thoughts when we're living the everyday life with other people. Sometimes I, f I find people are so eager to cling to old, their old thoughts and, and they forget to make new ones. In fact, that's the biggest problem with some people. I mean, they're, uh, when they retire, they think all I've got to do is to just sit and watch telly. And it's no good for your health. It's certainly um, no good for your um, mental health. And so uh, if, you are, if you aren't already doing it, may, I find that I don't feel alive any day unless I get outside the front door and go out into the, the world outside. I might only stay there for a second if it's raining, but uh, <laughs> the rest of the time, because most days I do quite a bit more. And then, as I was saying, we cling to old thoughts and we sometimes bring the unhappiness from, from the past, but never bring the happiness. And so much more of life is happy than, than is unhappy that I, one struggles to do it. And if you, if you find yourself thinking about all the unhappy things, then make sure you spend some time teasing out when you were happy and why you were happy. And make sure that we try and hold on to those and really rather leave the unhappy things where they all belong in the past. So each day we can make something new. Now, when we meet other people, if we meet other people, we can make so much difference. We can sometimes greet them and we can, we get, to, uh, you know, we're on, uh, the, what do they call it, the same wavelength, but sometimes we're quite the opposite and it's very difficult to know what to say. And it's very difficult to express God's love to other people when it's like that, isn't it? But we have to try. What can we do? How can we do it? What can we say? And I think the rule about it is we can, we can join in, of course, where people are happy and help them enjoy their, enjoy their happiness more. Because when people share happiness, it sometimes boosts people up and, and makes them even happier. But sometimes when people are unhappy, sometimes as an act of love, we have to share it as well. But we can make suggestions to help them look forward change their thinking so that they appreciate the blessings that they have actually still got. And sometimes we suddenly find there is a realization that something must be done and we're the ones to do it. Now, I, under another, with an, wearing another hat, as it were, have for several years, um, I don't do it any longer since the COVID, and um, things haven't worked out so well, but um, I used to go and talk to people about the leprosy mission and to all the work that they did. But way back when it started, there was nothing done. 
It started with a young man who went from Dublin to India. It was in the 1870s and he was, I thought he was um, joining the police force and I'm being corrected and told he was going to be a teacher. But whichever it was, he had to learn Hindi or the local language in his part of India, I don't know where. But every day he used to walk down the street and there's all these beggars and they were all leprosy sufferers. Some of them had up rotting arms and legs and all the rest of it. And after a time, it got to him. And in the end, he thought that I can't leave them. So he started a mission and gave up on his teaching. And by the time he had... Um, by the time he died in uh, um, 1937, I've been corrected and told that was it. Um, I thought it was um, far earlier, but um, he had missions in 38 different countries and they couldn't do anything for these um, leprosy sufferers at all. Uh, uh, every, everybody who looked after them tried to find different ways. And then in 1948, I think, was it 48? Anyway, or perhaps it was even, um, later than that, they all got together, um, these different semi-cures that cured some people and another, and combined them. And then they had a miracle um, discovery that um, yes, they could cure um, leprosy. And so the work goes on. At the moment, they are trying to, um, well, they're testing uh, an inoculation method of stopping leprosy in its tracks. But when you think that uh, leprosy takes 20, 30 years to come out into people sometimes, you can tell it's, it's, that's a long-term um, aim. They, may, they think they've got it, but they can't, they can't say it's true because not enough time has gone by. And so they, the, the latest thing is they're trying to find an inoculation uh, not an inoculation, a test, just a pinprick on the finger and, and a quick dub on some chemical or other, and they hope that they'll be able to instantly diagnose whether a person's got leprosy or not. Because some, no, so many people in these tropical countries, they, um, they run away when they think that they've got leprosy. They don't say for the result of the test. And of course, then they suffer from it. Whereas if they can be given the the uh, cure instantly, the, it's only pills, um, that they can be cured of it before anything bad happens to them. And the last thing, of course, about leprosy is that it's a disease of poverty, really, mostly, anyway. And two countries, um, which are Korea and Japan, it's all disappeared since the Second World War, and all because they had an economic boom, were fed properly, and consequently, they don't, they, don't, they don't suffer the diseases of starvation and all the rest. We used to have leprosy in this country and, the, um, and it was because people ate squirrels, because squirrels apparently have leprosy uh, endemic in the population. Anyway, don't, uh, there, there we are. That, that's somewhat um, I found out about that. Now, I've done it all by memory now, so now I've lost my way. <laughs> so now, yes, I can, I, I'll say it now because I, I might not be here um, again, because um, we're so far apart, aren't we? And they tend to keep us <laughs> at, at our own ends of the earth. Um, the stories of Jesus are not just stories. They tell you and you can use them to solve problems that you're faced with. Now, since when my wife died about 15 years ago, I set myself the task of going to, on holiday to New Zealand. I'd always wanted to go and it never worked out. And then anyway, I went and I, I went to visit a friend um, as part of the, I went on a circular tour of both islands, but I went to visit a friend and I was going to visit a friend. He was a scout when I was an assistant scoutmaster. Now, he, I was 18, he was 14 then, so you see, it's quite, as you get old, that, that age difference doesn't make any difference. And he used to bring scout, uh, he used to bring cubs from the old cub pack to Kongsbury for a pack holiday. One year, he and his wife, Dorothy, they said, we're not coming anymore. And we thought, oh gosh, that's, what's happened? But they said, we're going to emigrate to New Zealand. 
So in the intervening years, Dorothy had died. And um, so um, Peter, he um, emailed me back. He says, don't come 1st of January as you were suggesting. Come 1st of February. If you do that, the Queen always comes then. They must choose the best weather. They wouldn't um, choose the, sto the stormy weather. So that's the plus point. And you can also come to a, a wedding because um, I'm going to remarry because uh, Dorothy having died, um, I've met somebody and we're going to have a wedding. And weddings in New Zealand are a little bit different from here because when in the colonial um, days, they didn't have enough clergy to actually perform weddings. So they, they have in each town village, uh, um, a group of two or three people, perhaps more, who are called wedding celebrants and they do the um, wedding. And um, so um, his future wife had, um, it was a wedding celebration herself. So she got somebody she knew to celebrate the wedding. We had a Maori choir and uh, oh, it was, it was so interesting. And the, and the funny thing was, um, I was sitting in the reception and just, just that just a uh, distance away was uh, sitting at, at, at somebody else about my age. And I discovered he'd grown up within a barn of my house at, at, on the edges of London and I'd never met him before. His, his scoutmaster even lived, lived next door to me. And so uh, one, uh, we talked about it and we discovered he was in a different school catchment area. And he, that mile uh, had made all the difference. So am I friends with him? But I've been back um, three times since. One day, I, my friend, I was with him by himself at that time, and he told me about the distress in their family. Um, his son was refusing to have anything to do with anybody in the family, just cut all communications off, and they couldn't understand it. I don't know whether you've ever been um, faced with such a situation. He was, re he was really down about it. And I couldn't, I couldn't for the life of me at the moment think of what to say to him. So the rest of my holiday, and I even um, consulted one of our ministers uh, when I got back and he couldn't say, think what was to say. And eventually I could only write to him and I said, look, you may never get communications back with your son, but this is what you can do. I said, you must keep the communications going so that he knows what's going on in the family, even if he doesn't respond. And then perhaps um, that will um, get him back on, the, on your wavelength again. And he wrote back and says, we're all doing it straight away. And six months later, he actually wrote a letter to the family saying, can I come back? Now, what the quarrel was, I don't even know his name. I've never met him, but it was really great that that should be the case. Contrawise, that's easy because you can see the analogy with a prodigal son, can't you? Oh, there's one thing I did say to him, and I'll say, I says, whatever you do, if he comes back, don't ask him why he went. Don't ask him what he's been doing. If he tells you, that's all right, but don't ask, don't be inquisitive. It may be a sensitive thing. So after that, it's funny, when you do one thing, it, it sort of, you some, get enough, something else like that. Um, another member, a member of my own family, quarreled with somebody, in, uh, a youngster, compared with him, he was a married man and he thought he knew everything. And he <coughs> had a quarrel with one of the younger members. And she never <coughs> spoke to him again. And of course, he's getting older like me um, and <coughs> catch up, catching up with me fast, I should think. But anyway, the thing was, he wanted to make it up. And what did he do? First thing he did was to talk about the old quarrel and reopen it, and he never got anywhere. It was, it was really, um, he, he, he must have been getting a bit desperate because he told me about it. Um, and after a bit, I thought, because I, I, I'm not, um, I, I'm not part of the 
quarrel and I'm, I'm quite friendly, so I, I know a bit more. And I said, well, this person, they've written a book. Did you know? Oh, no. And what about and all the rest of it? I said, well, you can look it up on the internet. I'm sure I'll find all about it. Next time you speak to her, don't um, actually mention anything about quarrel. Say, I saw your book on the internet. And, uh, and take up the conversation. And I said, and never speak about the past at all. That's fine enough. Well, last year, was it the year before? In the, just the end of the um, internet, we had a, a family party and it, so far it seems to be working. So um, well, I'm pray, I pray every so often that that will happen, that it will carry on like that. Because you see, what's happened in the past ought to be left in the past. The quarrels of the past will be forgotten about. When, we meet, when our country makes peace with another country like Germany, we can leave the past in the past and try and build a new future, don't we? And that happens across to other people as well. So it, that confirms that a new heaven and a new earth can only happen if we are prepared to be the channels of Jesus' love to those around us in our daily lives. I pray that you will have found some food for thought. And I've just looked up in my concordance this week. There are 50 um, parables um, or, uh, or like stories in the um, Bible. If we choose to study one every day, uh, well, every, well, even every day, but every, every month, say, we, 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 we take a, it's a long time to study them all. And I guess we could, if we ask us what's really behind it, just like this, what was really behind that um, uh, vision that um, was granted, um, where it, was, it was Bethel, I think, wasn't it, Robert? Yeah, um, it was granted to Jacob. If we ask what's behind it and to seek to understand it, we not only understand the Bible story, we'll understand ourselves. And that is a most difficult job of all, isn't it? So let us come to our closing hymn which is fault in thy name, O Lord, I go.
in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon us and remain with us forevermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.